Hello, welcome to Smoking with Swami. Today we have some wonderful friends, Josh and Kelly, from Dragonfly Earth Medicine, who've been at the Emerald Cup, and they're here with us today to talk about what we've been calling uh, remedial farming, remedial agriculture, and today we're saying maybe we should try and call it living soil. All yeah. right. So what is your take on uh, what this microbial way of uh, farming, this biological way of farming, so what are the basic elements of it, if you can be? Well, microbiology is really important because um, the breakdown of the nutrients in living soil happens with microbiology. And then as you're adding whole foods or whole nutrients or even in nature, you know, leaves fall underneath a tree, it's the microbiology that makes it available to the plant. And they're the ones that feed the plants, so we're here. So who are these microbiologists who are living in the soil? I mean, are they like, uh, they're our what ancestors. do they do? They're our ancestors. I see, and what are they made of? Like nematodes, is that what you're talking about? We're talking about Mycelium? Fung fungi, bacteria, the microbes, macrobes, really, I mean, you could go into the forest. Oh, macrobes, you told me, earlier today are worms yeah <laughs> okay yeah. and microbes are bacteria and all the little yeah, all the microscopic you know all things right. that you see under a microscope when you do a soil sample and you can check out the different life there's there's can, can be a billion different you know organisms in your hand if you pick up a handful of of uh, old growth so that's, that's why we're saying living soil right it's so it's alive, alive. and so what ha well, how is that contrasted to commercial agriculture which is putting on tons of nitrogen and phosphorus and powder form well, that, that, that type of agriculture and feeding of plants is more feeding the plants rather than feeding the soil. Ah. So when you have a living soil system, you're really, your focus is to feed the microbial colonies so that they colonize and that you're, you know, really upping your beneficials constantly with really good food that you know that they like. And then, you know, really large big ag is... Uh, just directly feeding the plant. They're bypassing the biological system and breakdown. So they're feeding with chemistry. Yeah. Bits of nitrogen. And if microbes are not living, they're dying. Uh, so they uh, have to be feeding and expanding, and that's the purpose of compost tea is, is to build a colony and try and water it at its peak so you get that peak in. Okay. You know. So now we know that in the forest, nobody fertilizes the stuff in the forest. So whatever mm -hmm. falls down, mm -hmm. lands on the ground, and then gets covered over next year, and then gets mm -hmm. covered over the year after that, and gets covered over. By the time it's down there, it's actually now changing into actual soil. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing about having undisturbed soil, and that's the problem with agriculture. You know, they're not only are they bypassing microbiology by feeding synthetics and going straight into the root system, they're also, you know, tilling the land or cover, taking the cover off the land and exposing it to sun, which kills microbiology. So the whole idea is piling and layering and lasagna and trying to, you know, get a diverse okay. layers of biomass to create life. That interact with one another and eventually make all soil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I, I'm starting a garden, mm -hmm. right? So what do I do? Do I dig a hole? Do I plow the field? What do I do if I say, okay, let's we're going to start a cannabis garden? You mm -hmm. want to start a regenerative cannabis farm, and how do you want to, what are some of the steps that it takes? Check your soil, yeah. your exposure, know your, know your so weather. So the first thing with all permaculture is to observe. Mm -hmm. Watch yeah. and see what nature's already doing there. Maybe right? talk to some of the locals, some so of the neighbors. So what test would you do for the soil? You know, if you can take a, a soil test and send it into one of the numerous soil uh, soil testing facilities in California or beyond, depending on where you are, because you could be anywhere, right. then that's a, a really great start. And then you can know. Some people say that, you know, they know what's happened on the land before you, but they may not know. So say, right, right. Say, so you don't, say you don't know what's going on the land beforehand. A test is going to help you assess. So there are a couple kinds of tests. So I've had tests, and they give me the NPK and the boron and the magnesium and the manganese and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, okay. yeah, and it also sort of tells the pH of the soil And it as tells us well. it's sandy or loamy yeah. or Organic yeah. matter yeah. percentages. Exactly. And if it's something that you can work with, it's really ideal to be able to use your native soil because right. then you're harvesting indigenous microorganisms into your cannabis root zone and that's a really great thing because what's happening around your zone in your area that's beneficial and really healthy is what you want to have in the roots right. of your right. so so of your cannabis. does your soil drain does your soil pool mm -hmm. can you dig in a trench and pile it with organic matter so you kind of assess your soil um, if it's so every place is unique really 
do you have Every ground animals? Unique. Do you, you know? Do you what? What kind of things eat your plants and stuff? So, basically, in the end, we're trying to create beds attached to the earth. Mm -hmm. Because all this pot life and pots that are happening right. everywhere, especially in California, Southern Oregon, it's hot. Right. I mean, oh, yeah. it's exposed. There's that's more I demand on water. Mm -hmm. the that's why I stopped is, using them because they're usually black. Yeah. Right? And, and those little tender roots come up to that and they're, ah, it's like 150 mm -hmm. degrees. And, you can and take, the microbiology will go down underneath the pot and into the soil that's underneath it because it can't live in the pot because it's too extreme of temperature. The humidity is extreme, right, you know, right, it's really right. wet or it's really right. dry or it's really yeah. cold. So I finally figured really that hot. out and this past year we put yeah. our plants in yeah. the ground and so on. And what we did is we put in uh, oak branches and, and little chunks of oak Wonderful. in the bottom, right? And then oak leaves on it and then some of the, the actual soil from the meadow. Mm -hmm. And then we put in some little biochar mm -hmm. and... Um, what else? With mycelium we had in there, and mm -hmm. then, uh, the then, then the soil that I'd used before and compost and so on. So yeah, layering like like a lasagna, right? Yeah. Because that's the living soil. It's the the act of eating through organic matter that makes it living. If you've already eaten through your whole soil and colonized and broke down everything, it's it's not really alive in the same way. It's going to be more dormant and waiting for something else to eat. Right. Mm -hmm. A worm farm can't be a worm farm unless there's organic matter on the top So you have to it. feed the worm farm mm -hmm. also. Yeah. If you can't dig a hole into the ground, which some people have areas that they really just right. can't dig a hole into the ground, then you can do exactly what you were talking about, which is gathering material and making a mound. On top of the ground. On yeah. top of the yeah. ground. Ideally, you want to be able to put plants into the ground right. because you even get, you know, however deep that you dig your hole is however big that your plant can get. Uh -huh. Because then the roots can really go out into a good area. But I think but cannabis roots don't go that that deep. They like mm -hmm. to go laterally. They more, do. Right? Yeah. So you have a wider hole that maybe isn't so so deep and so on. Yeah. So, but then what I understand is that oak in the bottom becomes yeah. like a sponge that holds yeah. water, and it also attracts fungi because fungi generally break down lignans and and strains. Lignans are what? What's in the wood? Yeah, it's what makes up the wood. It's sort oh. of the cellulose, the sort of cellular membranes right. that mass. go through the wood is the lignans, and okay. that's you know the thing. And that over gets time, that kind down. of rots, but it holds, and then uh, then it gets colonized by yeah. all these little your friends, your microbiologists. Right. Our family, yeah. our family. Our ancestors, um, so if you the, the one most important thing is like there's a lot of people getting new land and developing new land or maybe they're expanding. And the one most important thing we feel right now and is, is in a time of, of you know, 400 parts per million per month of carbon in the air. Yeah, car, you know, plants and, and um, uptake right. carbon. But when there's not enough plants, then there's too much carbon in the air. So, you know, burning, burning wood puts carbon in the air and puts things in the air which is bad for us so we're trying to sequester the carbon and put things right. into the right. earth so you know we're we don't burn on our property at all anymore no more branches no more branch pile just somehow some way it's going to go yeah. into the yeah. earth some way or it's going to get so wood chopped chipper up helps, right? wood chipper. okay yeah so you're going to do wood chips you're going to do some thinner branches and maybe a couple of bigger logs and then cover right. that up maybe some rocks uh -huh. you know what i mean and then right. and then some dirt on top of that and, and some layer king's the dirt. tropharia would be really ideal get some, really... put some bokashi in there or something like sure that? you can right. put bokashi in there and at, at a small percentage Absolutely. because bokashi is a really big vigorous um, a digester, but it's also acidic. A high pH. So right. if you, it's a fermentation you potentially thing, right? overuse Bokashi oh, really easy, you know, oh. it's, it's all about that, like, kind of 5% and So I've heard that one of the best places to use the Bokashi is on your compost pile directly to salt it in there and helps it, the compost pile work faster. Right? Yeah, because you're putting a dominant strain of lactic acid bacteria culture in there, which is really great because then that out dominates and yeast and, and, yeast and other things in there that, you know, just helps oh, out dominate and eat up all of the pathogens. Right. So then people also talk about these EM1s, these efficient microorganisms, yeah. right? Yeah. And so we also uh, made some uh, indigenous ones where yeah. we buried some rice and, and boiled awesome. rice and so yeah. on. This is and, a good thing. So, I mean, the EM is pre-made and it's something you buy. Some people are like, I don't want to buy anything. I want to make it myself. Yeah. I totally love that. And, and that's where Korean natural farming comes in because they really talk about how to attract microbes, whether you, you know, walk wash rice and put it into an environment and attract the microbes or use potatoes and uh, get potato well, this water. Is, we had little boxes and it grew this white mycelium layer right on top of it. But one of them spoiled, right? Somehow yeah, the weather was bad. The, the and it was colors. like rainbow 
colors in there. And so yeah. oh, we better yeah. not use that. Yeah. <laughs> Another so, thing you can do is just get leaves that have a lot of white um, strands. Okay. That's your indigenous microorganisms right, right. without well, bringing Because you go into the in. forest, we have this Doug Fir forest, and you go down a little bit, and you see this lace-like white yeah. stuff. Yeah, that's, that's the, the microorganisms. Yeah, microorganisms. It's not just mycelium. Ah. It's also other microorganisms, and it shows that there's white, fresh life there. So if you take, like, say, a handful of of that uh, white leaf stuff and put it into a a gal, uh, you know, fifty-five gallon drum and chop up a bunch of weeds that are beneficial. Maybe grab a bunch of ganja leaves, throw it in the barrel, and that leaf matter will be your indigenous microorganisms I that see. grow uh, through the le- the. Well, we the did that. We did that chamber. with the male plants, right? We took the male plants yeah. and we kind of brewed them and then threw them into the compost. Yeah, that's So now great. the other part is once you're growing, is the compost teas. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. So that's one of the most. Im- so what are the main ingredients for the compost teas? Whatever you've got growing around your area. Oh, okay. Just but you that, have this preparation that you sell for the compost tea, which we is We do, what? which is based off of whatever we have around our immediate oh, area. See. So if you can drink can, raw, you know, raw, you know, if you can juice your own vegetables and drink it, it's really good for you. But, you know, the second choice might be a dried version. You know, yeah. so that's what you look at it. You Raw know, we vegetation have a, is great. We have a first. beautiful uh, product of, of herbs that are dried and have bacteria. And, and we like having leaves and leaf compounds in with compost tea there's a lot of compost there's a lot of compost tea where it's just compost tea and maybe a tiny bit of of sweetener maybe a little bit of unsulfured molasses but we like the leaf matter in there so mostly we try chopping up fresh fresh weeds right fresh weeds okay yeah Uh so the way that we came up with our recipe is just looking around in our immediate zone and what do we see as superfoods not only for the plants and the soil but also for ourselves which is nettles Horsetail is a wonderful silica. Oh, right, you know, yeah, Nettacles uh-huh. is all around yeah, amazing here. tonic. Although a couple of different kinds Alfalfa of Alfalfa is so Alfalfa, fantastic. Right, right, and yeah. make sure you that you get it organic. You can scotch broom and get, oh, an, really? you can oh. get an incredible, yeah. you know, uh, substrate to, you know, your soil mixture or a top dress. Nice Whatever person. you have in your zone. And you all in this area of California have a lot of scotch broom. You have a right, lot of too. blackberries. Grasses. You have a lot of oak. All incredible. of the grasses. So many incredible micronutrients right, in there. Right that the organisms, as soon as you layer it on top or you put it inside of your brews, however it is that you, or compost it, Mm -hmm. however it is that you want to utilize it, the microbiology is going to find that and want to eat it up because it's such good food for them. And we really recognize that that healthy soil is our health. Mm -hmm. That healthy soil becomes our health. We use it. Our hands are in there. It's in Mm -hmm. our fingernails. We accident. Mm -hmm. Maybe we pull a carrot out. We eat it. It goes goes past into yeah. our lower digestion. It's, yeah, it's healthy all about soils, healthy yeah, bodies. Yeah. No, I think that a lot of times parents are so worried about their kids eating yeah. a little dirt, you know, but yeah. that's how they develop I, I know yeah. these microbes in their own bodies, yeah. right? And, and so many yeah. ailments that we have in our own bodies, like colitis and uh-huh. IBS and, you know, non-digestive problems. I could go on and on uh-huh. with, the, with the issues that we're having, probably because of the external toxins that we're yeah. more And also be people in being and, too clean. Yeah, you know, and like, when oh, we test the gut, When we test the gut of those people that have these ailments, we're realizing that they're totally devoid of soil microbiology. Wow, that this, yeah. what's in the soil is what it, our health is. Right. So to re-inoculate ourselves with these incredible, intelligent, beneficial microbiology is imperative for our own health and well-being. Not only in our body, but our mind. We make mm-hmm. better decisions. And to us, that's regenerative, and that goes yeah. beyond sustainable. Like, if we have a sustainable agriculture, we're sustaining something that's potentially broken. Yes, yes, yes. And we really need, to, re- we, we really need to regenerate it. We need to right, right. generate yeah. life. We need right. to feed it so it can generate. Right. And that, that's in right. our mind. And actually, and cannabis is very much part of that process, right? Yeah. Because we know also cannabis has been used to take toxins out of the soil. It naturally right? remediates the soil, right. so it's, it's really incredible. not a revelation to yeah. have a regenerative cannabis farm. It's kind of like, of course yeah. you have a regenerative <laughs> cannabis farm because cannabis <laughs> regenerates the soil. Right. But we have to ask ourselves every step of the way when we create our farm, is it good for the earth? Does it serve microbes? Is it healthy? Um, what's the embedded energy in the parts that we're bringing in? What does it take to make those parts? Do we know our farmers? Can we get unsprayed, totally organic hay or straw or yeah, alfalfa? Yeah, that's part of the problem sometimes. You know? Yeah, we put a lot of Knowing alfalfa. And we had to find okay, is this organic alfalfa? Is these organic alfalfa seeds and stuff like that? Right. 
and so uh, alfalfa meal and so on. So all those things, you do have to read the label or, you know, ask around because uh, there's a lot of stuff out there that's not really pure already. Although the composting process will take care of a lot of that stuff. There right? is remediation to having healthy, you know, beneficial... Uh, microorganisms, but a expanding. lot of chemicals out there, you know, the glyco, the glyphosate, and different types of things that are sprayed. Maybe, you know, those farms are not being tested often, or maybe they okay. don't have an organic certification, or you know, you really need to right. look into it and find out where your farmer is, not only right. Right. for right. your nutrients, but also for buying your cannabis. All right. Oh, through. yeah. Well, that's the key thing. Now, and I think in some cases, people who've had bad experience with cannabis. It wasn't actually the cannabis that I gave agree. them a bad experience. I agree. It was like it was pesticides on it or toxins or mold or something in there that was doing it. Or in some cases, just the greedy bad vibe of the people who tried <laughs> I mean, to we're, grow it. <laughs> we're smoking big, you know, tons of ganja from all these amazing, you know, farmers and stuff. And we feel amazing. Yeah, yeah. We feel okay. good. We're we're not dumb. We're smarter. We're like remembering more. It's it's our yes, brain is regenerating. Oh, no, yeah. Supposedly bad yeah. things about it. So but I guess if you put a, a, a gas mask on your head and, and you know like the monkeys and that you get bad results, which is what they taught us in school when we were young. So we're we're re oh, re, re, re yeah. We're, well, I don't know. I don't think there's people that many people who smoke more than we do. No. All right. I mean, really. Yeah. Guys probably smoke ten to fifteen grams a day. Yeah. And it's like. You know, I feel, I've never been healthier in my whole life. To tell you, the truth. you know, yeah, we drink. I can you know, agree. We drink superfoods. We eat right. as much organic food from our garden, which we know where it comes from. We smoke right. really good ganja, and we're in our mid forties, and we feel really, really good. Well, I'm in we're, my mid seventies. Well, it's beautiful. But, you know, you're our <laughs> you're amazing. you're our mentor for us. <laughs> yeah, you know? you're our inspiration. Yeah, oh, thank, thank you, thank yeah. you for upholding you, that. Listen, you guys are inspiration to me because just tonight. Sitting right here, I just learned a whole bunch of stuff from you guys, and it's important to pay attention to the little details. And so, mm -hmm. anyway, I think we could talk about this for a long time, but I think it's time we'll to wrap up later. this one uh, one little show. And thank you for joining, uh, Josh and Kelly and me. Thanks so much, family. Thanks so much, family. Thank you. <laughs>